blame game. It's the blame game. Well, Kamala Harris was recently on The View. And see, some of these interviews are causing the Democrats to panic. Even these solo interviews. See, about two months ago, everyone was on that sugar high rush for Kamala Harris. And yet, the more she speaks, the more people are reminded of just how much of a horrible candidate she truly was, especially in 2020. I mean, look, she got decimated and destroyed by Tulsi Gabbard during not one, but two primary debates in the 2020 primary, in the early stages when it was still 2019. She didn't make it to the first primary vote. Her campaign went belly up. She started off with a bang and then ended up like a fart in the wind. There we go. Making fart noise with my mouth. There we go. So what exactly happened with good old Kamala Harris? Well, Kamala Harris and The View decided to shift blame to Trump for the disastrous response to Hurricane Helene. Now, I'm not an expert and I'm not defending Donald Trump. But, and this is the key word, Trump is not the current sitting president. Trump isn't the problem that FEMA is failing to take care of the people. Now, of course, uh, again, you know, Trump is blaming the fact that FEMA is give, giving aid to uh, migrants. And this is a serious issue, too, because, again, you know, we have money for wars. We have money to do all this st other stuff, but we have no money to take care of actual U.S. citizens. And. Yes, I do feel sorry for the migrants, but the thing is the Democrats chose to use them as pawns, and now a lot of people are going to get hurt. And, I, and you know what? I just see this powder keg blowing up even further. So Kamala decides to blame Trump. You don't have to believe me. Hear it from Kamala Harris herself on The View itself. A show that is trying to be relevant, but it's clearly nothing more than for uh, wine, mom, wine mom Karen's to just huddle around the TV and say, Trump bad, Trump bad, Trump bad. Kamala, and I'm calling you Kamala because for all of those who are mispronouncing it, I want you all to know how to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but let's talk about something you would do different from Donald Trump. Right now, there is a monster storm bar barreling yeah. towards my state of Florida, yeah. a place that's still reeling from Hurricane Helene. Mm. Trump is lying, claiming that yeah. the Biden administration is intentionally withholding aid from the areas where Republicans live and that <laughs> FEMA funds are being redirected to migrants. Ironically, that is something he did in yeah. 2019. What do you think the effect of these lies are and why is he doing this? Well, it's okay. profound and it is the height of irresponsibility and frankly, callousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So lives are literally at stake right now. I, w I traveled to Georgia and to North Carolina after Hurricane Helene. In Georgia, I met a woman who just days earlier, her husband was killed in their home by a fallen tree. Whenever Kamala speaks, like, I, I just, I just have to say, like, what are you lying about this time? What? I mean, did you really speak to these people? Did you really do it? And even if it, this story did happen, did you even care what she was even saying to you? Oh, no. <clears throat> Days later, I met with her and her daughter. You can imagine the pain, the shock that they are still in about what they experienced, what they witnessed. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about really. Uh, yeah, I just noticed that too. Kinkle brings it up. Is that a Star Trek pin on her jacket? Human beings and their lives. And them losing everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. This woman lost her husband. Her child lost her father. Mm -hmm. People are losing their home with no hope of ever being able to reconstruct or, or return. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea that somebody would be playing political games for the sake of himself, but this is so consistent about Donald yeah. Trump. Mm -hmm. He puts himself yeah. before the needs of others. I, I, I fear that he really lacks empathy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. And like every single politician in Washington, D.C. has, has full on empathy, like. Oh, yes, they care about the people, even though a lot of your friends in Washington, D.C. are doing insider trading. Very basic level oh. to care about the suffering of other people and then understand the role of a leader 
is is not to beat people down it's to lift people yeah. up oh yes lifting people up woo but last i checked and credits born says as inspiring as a paper bag hey don't be insulting paper bags there man all right paper bags are good <laughs> we got to remember okay we're talking about empathy so the last three and a half years, almost going on, it might as well be four years now. Who was the VP? It was you, Kamala. Now, during these four years of the Biden-Harris administration, what have we witnessed? The intensification of wars and economic disastrous uh, plan in which during these four years, we're seeing more and more Americans struggle to make ends meet. We're seeing Americans struggle to survive. Would you have done anything differently? Because when you talk about empathy, I don't think you got it. Look what happened to the people of East Palestine, Ohio. Look how long it took the president to even visit East Palestine, Ohio. It took him months to get there. Months to get there. And then same thing with the disaster in Lahaina. It took him a couple of weeks to get there too. And when Biden got there, oh, hey, guys, let me regale you guys and tell you the story of when my kitchen caught on fire. Yeah, that's that's very that's on the same level when people lose their friends, family, loved ones, homes, vaporized in a wall of flame. But they could relate to Biden having a kitchen fire. How'd that work out? How'd that work out? Empathy. Would you have done anything differently, Kamala? Could you have done anything differently? Here's a 17 second answer response. Well, if, if anything. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of. No Medicare for all, no student debt forgiveness, no investing in our infrastructure, no helping out the people of East uh, Palestine, Ohio or Flint, Michigan or people of Lahaina. And hey, people in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Georgia and Florida, not once but twice getting hit by a hurricane. Hey, all y'all are on your own. So no, you wouldn't have done anything differently. And the war in Gaza, the war in Ukraine, potential conflict with Taiwan, uh, Taiwan over with China. Wouldn't do anything differently. Won't do anything differently. Then I've been. Say that again. Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Well, if but speaking of which, do you want to know what, 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 she, what she is happy to do over and over again and hit the replay? Here's her third iteration of telling the whole world when she became, that's right, you guessed it. You guessed it. When she became, let me go ahead and uh, restart this again. When she became the Democratic nominee, isn't that special? Let's go and play this video. All right, there's no audio to it. Hold on. Apologies for that, folks. Let me go ahead and refresh it. I don't know why the audio was not choosing to work this time around, so I'm going to try it again. Sorry about that, folks. Out and I had on cooking shows, and they were asking me, Auntie, what's that ingredient? What's that ingredient? And they're playing while I'm working out. Make breakfast. We sit down. We're having breakfast. And we'd been working on a puzzle. So they wanted more bacon, got more bacon. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it goes. Yeah. And so then we had a puzzle. So we went back up to work on the puzzle. I'm still in my workout clothes. Right. And we're working on the puzzle and the phone rings. Right. So I said, Auntie, you'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> and it was the president. And he told me his decision. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the first thing I asked him is, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Because what a big decision. Yeah. yeah. And, his and that's probably not how the conversation went. He says, like, hey, they're telling me I can't be president. I know, Joe. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Jack? Historic. Oh, yeah. And um, 
and we talked for a while. Um, meanwhile, I, I went back into the room where the girls were, and I'm like, go get your father. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing these cringe interviews for a reason. Case in point, this one right here. There was a time not too long ago where Howard Stern was once a shock jock. A shock jock. And looking at him now, he always was a poser. The king of radio. My wazoo. When you ran for Senate, it was bittersweet, right? You won, yeah. which is great. But you said I ate a whole bag of Doritos that night. That's your thing, Doritos? Yeah, so when she won U.S. Senate, she ate a whole bag of Doritos. When she's stressed, she eats a bag of Doritos. So that means that means when Putin's sending his war plans to nuke our cities, probably, <laughs> they're going to find her in the bunker <laughs> surrounded by a bag of Doritos. <laughs> our commander-in-chief, ladies and gentlemen, don't you feel safe already? Doritos. Doritos for days. Now, now I know how the Romans felt. As soon as they realized their emperors were getting weaker and weaker, this is it. This is it. This is the sign of terrible things to come. Oh, I love Doritos. It was original nacho. But I, let me just tell you, it was a family size bag. Wow. <laughs> I sat on the couch. But you're in good shape. Were you like I work nausea? out every morning. Did you work out this morning? I did. Where did you work? You think she worked out type three for yes, kid. She's a dedicated, strong woman. Shame on you. That for man, no, she did. This is another lie. Yeah. At, on the elliptical at the hotel. Oh, they bring one up to your room? Yeah. Nice. How long do you go on the elliptical? Uh, half an hour to 45 minutes. You're not bored out of your skull on that thing? I'm watching a variety of things. That's how I catch Morning it. Joe? Um, so, yeah. Uh, He's sometimes. Huh? Yeah. That morning Joe. Uh huh. I love that guy. I do too. Joe Scarborough. Uh, yeah. A, a, a former Republican. Yes. You can't. Dan, I'm not pulling that message up. Shame on you. Get up, go see the White House counselor. Vote in his own but party. He loves our country. I don't he, agree with him on every issue, but we agree on, the. I think, the most important at this moment for sure. Why are you eating for breakfast raisin bran, I read? Um, I feel that's <laughs> not for someone who's healthy. And why raisin bran? There's a lot I, of sugar. Well, no, so I don't eat raisin bran every morning. But okay. if you asked me what was my favorite cereal, I would put it right up there with, okay, and then this is going to be obnoxious and special K. <laughs> special. Yeah, you're special K, all right? Special Kamala. <laughs> ah! Ah! I think we made a meme! Ah! Ah! Internet! 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 You got a homework assignment! Internet! Stop! Stop what you're doing! Internet! Stop what you're doing! We got a homework assignment. Special K, special Kamala. Okay. I want a special K cereal box with Kamala Harris on it. Make it happen. Make it happen, Internet. I, I know that there are talented, creative people out there. Go ahead. That Send it out there. Special K on the nose. We did it. We did it. Booze and food. Yes. We did it. I think we did it. Salty Digital Dive. Get up, go see the White House Counsel right now. Special K, great name. Booze infused cereal. She's definitely some special K. I think we did it. I think we did it. Kinkle saying pitching to the Kellogg campaign donors. We did it. Yes. Yes, we did it. We did it. I think I think we did it. I'm I'm I I am I am I am very proud. I'm very proud of what we just created. And we all did it together as a family, like fast and furious, like family. We did it like family. There you go. But there's a reason why I played all those cringe videos in the first place. And you know what? I didn't, I didn't get to the end of that um, Howard Stern thing, but was a special K. Oh, that's great. Ten, 10 out of 10. That's why I love doing this show. Sometimes there's some videos that I, I can't watch fully, but mm, we did it. I, I, I am proud of all of you.
But here's what's going on. Democrats start to hit the panic button. Oh, no. Democrats' nerves are at an all-time high. Two months ago, even a month ago, they are feeling bullish about Vice President Harris' prospects of defeating former President Trump, the orange boogeyman, a woogie, boogie, 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 boogie. But now, with less than a month ago until Election Day, they're increasingly worried about a number of issues plaguing the Democrat nominee's campaign. On Tuesday, there was grumbling from some Democrats about Vice President's interview on CBS 60 Minutes. Yes. She said she owns a Glock. Oh, yeah, she, she's got a Glock. Kamala Harris, Glock, Glock. You know what I'm saying? There's also concern on everything from the static poll numbers in the race to the vice president's messaging and even her standing with men, not just white men. That's right. But black and Hispanic men, too. It's all men. All men all the time. Hey, no one tell fresh and fit because they'll be just be boys being boys. <laughs> Fresh and fit, fresh and fit, just boys being boys. <laughs> I'm sorry, one more time. Hey, listen, listen. All the lies are being revealed. Okay, it's it's all happening. All lies will be exposed. That's your goddamn right. Some of the some of this perhaps can just be chalked up to normal Democratic nerves ahead of what looks like could be the closest presidential elections in history. Either way, it's nerve wracking for Democrats. Oh, my heart bleeds for you. Anyways, everything is deadlocked and the com uh, composition of the electorate is unknowable. And there are so many things that are unprecedented, said Democratic strategist Jamal Simmons. Oh, my goodness. And he served as Harris's communications director until last year, which means he's a former director, which means you left. Come on, speak from your heart, J Jamal. Hold on. Jamal Simmons, look at me. Blink twice if Kamala hit you. It's okay. You could be brave. <laughs> we can't look back with any level of security because we haven't had an African-American woman on the ticket. We haven't had a former president running again. We haven't had a campaign with two assassination attempts. We haven't uh, switched out candidates two months before the election day before. So it's just hard to know, Simmons explained. If you're not nervous, you're not paying attention. Oh, I'm not nervous. I'm excited. I'm laughing. I'm literally foaming at the mouth. I only can imagine eating that delicious ribeye steak right now. Mm -mm -mm. Can't wait. Democrat strategist Anthony Coley, who served in the Biden administration, acknowledged the trepidation, pointing out the stagnant poll numbers in the weeks following the Democratic National Convention, when Democrats were making comparisons between Harris's campaign and former President Obama's run in 2008. Now that the sugar high is gone, People have realized what Kamala Harris has said from the start, which is that she is the underdog. Well, under some dog. What? No. I censored myself. Coley said, this is going to be a fight. These numbers are just so stubborn. Oh, I'm sorry. To be sure, there was good news for Democrats on multiple fronts in recent days. For starters, Harris benefited on the economic front following the news of a robust jobs report. Inflation, which was a major source of anxiety for Democrats, has also slowed. Whoa! Hey! To my fellow viewers, guess what? There's a robust jobs report and inflation is slowing down. Is that working great for you? Type 5 for yes, Kit. We're seeing it firsthand. What's wrong with you? You're just, you're just being mean. Type 6, I didn't get the memo. My wallet's still light. My bank account's still empty. What do you mean it's slowed down? Because I didn't get the memo. I wonder how many sixes will be in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. So, yes, and while this article does continue on saying that Harris has a three-point edge and that she's in the lead in some key swing states, again, voter turnout's going to be key. But with interviews like that, the more Kamala speaks, the more we are all being reminded of just how much of a horrible candidate she truly is. She's a terrible candidate. She doesn't have what it takes. And when being interviewed, she wouldn't change anything differently under the last four years when she was VP for Biden. Because if she were, that means she's saying that she herself was a terrible decision maker. And yet she's quit to blame Trump for FEMA's response for Hurricane Helene. Well, I mean, Democrats, you are in charge of it. Biden, Kamala, you are in charge of the relief how come the American people are still being screwed over? Where's their relief? How come when good, honest citizens are trying to deliver aid via by car, by truck, by mule train, or by helicopter or boat, 
they're quickly arrested or threatened with arrest or given a fine because they want to help out their, uh, their, their neighbors who are landlocked and can't get any kind of relief whatsoever. One time $750 though payment though, $50 more than what the people of Lahaina got. And yet, yet know this. If you are an investor in Doritos or is it at the Kellogg Corporation, you might get a nice boon because Kamala is going to be eating all the cereal and Doritos because she's so stressed with the numbers. Doesn't that bring some comfort to you? So you know what? While we are ever tiptoeing to destruction, grab a box of Special K and laugh because Kamala's laughing too, laughing in panic. Because this campaign is an absolute joke. And Democrats, you own this, so live with it.